So let's talk about another asset class where the capital partners are trying to make things work, and that's okay. office, right? Yeah. Uh, office is a class that's been struggling. It's been definitely a distressed asset class since 2020. And definitely the on everyone's mind are things like conversions or demolitions or just even just trying to improve them to save potentially distressed assets. What are you seeing in terms of the financing side of office products in the U.S.? So not seeing a lot of people jumping into it from a, from a finance perspective. I think you, you really have to be prepared to be an all-cash kind of buyer. Excuse me. Um, I think um, if you've got a very solid office building, and it's cash flowing with leases that are with credit tenants for the most part and have uh, sort of staggered expiration dates and you're underwriting it properly, meaning TIs, tenant improvements, leasing commissions are really part of the everyday expenses as recurring, not below the line items. So they're included before you get to the, the NOI. If you're underwriting it like that, I think there are lenders out there on the newer product with amenitized properties that'll lend you 50 to 60% loan to value. And they'll, and they can, they can give you, um, rates that are somewhat tolerable. And you're going to be buying these buildings between seven and a half to nine and a half kind of cap rates, you know, then there's positive leverage. And I think those deals will pan out. There's also people out there that are office kind of distressed buyers that are willing to give you preferred equity on those kind of deals. Last dollar in, riskiest money for, you know, 15 to 20% because they're going to take the risk that they're going to be um, owning the property and they like their basis. So I think there are certain transactions that will take place. It's really, truly a basis play. It is, you know, something was four or $500 a foot. Now it's 50 to $100 a foot. I think people get interested. The question becomes, how do I finance it? And then how do I make money on it? I think the key on office buildings, which people need to appreciate, is also you can't really mothball an office building. If you mothball it and close it up, to turn it back on, it's going to cost you a lot of money. The, the infrastructure within an office building is meant to be consistently on and not to be turned off. So you're going to have more costs. So you have to keep it up and running. And which means if it's vacant, you're going to have to pay expenses on a building and try to attract new tenants. I think that's problematic. So, but all those factors, I do hear a lot of people going into it. They're dipping their toes. They're looking at the basis and they're looking at the quality of the building. We, we've had success with some distressed assets in the office world, but it's all about buying at an extremely low price, right? Correct. Right. And, um, I'm not sure that there's enough humility yet in the office market to, on average, make deals pencil, but certainly there will be eventually. But one of the things that I'm interested, particularly from the lender side, is how um, a deal would pencil on a potential conversion. If you've seen office conversions from the lender side and kind of how you would see that being financed. So. This is also very interesting because when I started my career in 96 as a lawyer, offices were in vogue. Office buildings yeah. were, were, they were, they were getting premiums, publicly traded companies specializing in office were getting premiums. And now it's kind, kind of not happening. So the question is conversions and how do you, how does that play into a lender's perspective? And I think there are, they were getting a lot of these office to resi conversions were getting a lot of publicity and not a lot of them were actually happening. I think there was. You know, fewer than a hundred happening nationwide at some point. I, I don't know what the number is now, but you've got um, you've got to realize a couple of things. If you're going to convert an office building, you got to make sure it's going to be vacant. Okay, you got to make sure it's it's zoned or will be zoned to be converted, so you won't have any problem with that. And then you got to look at the nature of the building. You've got to have bigger floor plates, so older buildings. And then from just and I'm not a a developer per se. I've done some development, but I I mean. You give me a hammer and I don't know which end to use, but there's something to me that, that says like, if I'm going from, if I'm converting a building where on each floor you have two bathrooms and now you need to have 30 bathrooms, there's some sort of infrastructure issue that's going to cost a lot of money to fix. So 
you take all that together and then you say, okay, I did convert it. What is this building going to look like? And a lot of the conversions I've seen are really weird looking buildings from, from a, from a, you know, if I was a, a tenant, you, know, you have weird corners, you have weird lighting. It just doesn't, it's a, it's a weird looking sort of Jenga puzzle. And, and so to me, and the lobbies are dark and some of them are not great. So you, what are you getting out of this? Yes, you're, you're satisfying some utility because there's going to be a use for multifamily. But if you're spending all this money to convert and spending all this time, you better have a building that leases up and is attractive and over the long term will be that way. And I think that still remains to be seen. I think still, if you build something from scratch, it's going to look a lot better. So your com competition, you have to see that. So I think there's a long way to go. I think it's a valid effort that everybody's putting into trying to do this. I think there's a need for housing and I think office to housing is, makes a lot of sense, but from a, um, efficiency standpoint and idiosyncratic standpoint, it's very difficult to, to see how these things are going to work into some sort of prolonged business of doing it.